Well, first of all, Jürgen, before we break it down, how pleased are you and how important is that result today? So very important. Yeah. So we obviously cannot be too picky in our situation. We cannot decide, like choose games where we think we can have three points. We have to get three points. And um, the boys showed that obviously today that they understood that. And um, and then against the best team in the world, it's incredibly difficult. But we deserve the three points with with a really, really, really exceptional performance. We played really, really well and. We create chances, they create because you cannot expect in Anfield, but uh, most of the time we are really, really good and we make a mistake to don't, don't control the transitions that we know they can do it, we'll lose the duel and after they are so clinical and so good. Have you seen the goal that was disallowed again? Have you, have you changed your mind or? Me personally, I don't see enough reason, you know, especially with the referee, I don't know, three, four meters away, you know, from the situation and having clear vision um, to the action. I don't see the reason um, why it got back to VAR, so I, I think the goal should have stand. The referee decided to speak with the managers, with Jurgen and my assistant coach, and say, I'm not going to be fault and to be clear, and happen all the time in that way. You cannot disallow the goal. But if you decide in the first minute, so fault, 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 maybe it's fault. But, you know, this is our field. You paid the price late on in the game with a, with a red card. Was that today's frustrations, or is that a build-up more than today? Look, in my situation, I have to take everything. You can take look. I look older, I look tired, I look all these kind of things. I'm, I'm old, I'm not tired. And in that moment, then, yeah, it snapped, so my fault. But um, I think, I hope we agree. A match of the day, you have enough time to look at that situation, and maybe somebody in the studio finds an explanation why that was not a foul. People are making out that things have been really, really bad. When it's not been really, really bad, obviously it's been bad, but there was never something in the middle, of course. I think we did very well, especially first half, second half, defend a little bit more. And that's what you have to do against, uh, against the champions. Well, there was only one goal in that game, and Jurgen Klopp asked, asked us to look at something that actually we're not going to have time to look at because, because there is so much to unpick. Well, my head's spinning. How long have we got? <laughs> it was a terrific game. Two wonderful teams. I thought Liverpool played their best 90 minutes of the season, especially in the second half. I thought they were really good. I thought they exploited Manchester City's, let's say, unusual tactics very well. Um, I don't think Pep's team set up the right way, but we'll have a look at it. Here's the back three. Um, there's the two wing-backs high and wide, two holding midfielders, two attacking midfielders. Some, it's high risk. It was more like a cup game in many ways. Liverpool were on them early, winning tackles, pressing. As soon as they win the ball back transition, they've got a 4v3. You can't have that at Anfield, especially early in the game. It was quite an even first half, but a better ball there they could have been in. Here you notice De Bruyne let Elliot go, who was superb today, by the way, the young man. Normally, he'd be passing him on to a fullback who's not there. There's the two high wing backs, Cancelo and Foden. The back three all over the place, not used to playing in this formation, no communication, lack of cohesion. Better ball from Jota, you've got another 2v1, another overload on Ake, Elliot and Salah. Didn't quite happen. And the same thing kept happening in the second half. Don't get me wrong, City did make some good opportunities themselves playing this way because it is high risk. Salah's movement there is absolutely superb. Firmino in the hole. Again, getting in behind too easily, something we don't see t many teams do against City. Gomez, watch this for a pass and a touch from Elliot. On the turn, they're out. There you've got a 3v3. Yeah. High risk for, um, tactics from Manchester City. And then when you see them recover here and get back into a some sort of shape, Cancelo, your right wing back's now the left centre half. Ake, the left centre half of the three, is now a right back. And Jota's on his own in the box. This just isn't what we see Manchester City do. I think they made a mistake. But Liverpool jumped on them. And the, the, the precision, the intensity of Liverpool's play in the second half, the desire to get men forward, there you go, overload, 4v3. As I said, like an FA Cup game, like a semi-final, quarter-final, where you've got to win. And then any defender one-on-one -on -one with Salah, you, you can make a mistake, he can beat you with skill. The fact is, again, you're playing high-risk football, wonderful finish from a brilliant player who was back to his best today and deserves great credit for silencing the critics. Salah's best game today. And just one, just one thing, actually, on City. You know, sometimes, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And, and, and I suppose that's the thing in all this, because City still... Yeah, I mean, you're going to look at Liverpool's defence in a little while, but City still caused Liverpool problems offensively by they how did. they played today. Yeah, because that's the philosophy, isn't it, for Pep? He feels that he can play with three at the back, 
and maybe take the game. He wanted all these footballers on the pitch today. It didn't quite happen. 63% possession. I think Liverpool, though, were quite inspired and Mo Salah eventually. And in the end, Danny, it was route one football with all those tactics. Yeah. Goalkeeper kicks it long. But they'd had chances before, hadn't they? Correct. That gave him the confidence to ultimately finish off the game for Liverpool. But, you know, you have to say City, mate, they did. I think that the tactics they played made it easier for Liverpool to get at them, shall we say. Yeah. Because, because your argument could be that if they'd played, had with the same formation that they'd always played, the same way they always played, they could probably still have caused Liverpool the same amount of problems, but not being as open at the moment. I just think when Liverpool are playing really well, I understand trying to make a tactical change to try and cause them a problem. But Liverpool have been struggling a bit for confidence. City have been rolling over teams. Yeah. They, they lost their balance. At times, I saw them defending, unlike City. They didn't have any composure. It was this lose the wheel attack, you attack, wheel attack, and there, there was no cohesion. It was a very, it was a great game, and City had chances as well. But it wasn't a City-like performance. There wasn't that control. But let's give Liverpool some credit. I mean, they raised their game today. They played with an intensity without the ball, but in the second half, the key to the win was the quality with the ball. And and also their much maligned. Yeah. Defence at times. It was about this restoring. Season was was excellent. Yeah, they had to restore that reputation. And, and Gomez is a player I've got a lot of empathy for. He's had a really bad injury. He snapped his patella tendon. It takes you two years to get back from that. I did a partial rupture myself, and it's been slow. But today I thought with Van Dijk, the two of them were really solid, really strong. And Hallen with 20 goals going into the game, you've got to sniff him out, and he did that really well. Excellent defending, and he's got the the skill set as well, the young man, to to work this out. Now people panic about body shape as a defender. It's like, OK, you don't have to be able to see him, but if you can sense where he wants it, and he wants it there, Gomez knows that, and he just drops off nicely, comes across, look, he's really organised, gets a block in, shuts him off. I like his pace as well. He's going for it now. He's showing that, that he's getting that pace back, dealing with things in the channels, which is really important. This is like your back four. Look at his body shape, marking. They're almost in two pairs here. Van Dijk knows, I don't want the overlap there. I've got to get back. So he puts the burners on and shuts off that near post. Hallen's been picked up at the far post. They're all working together as, as a unit. Here again, Van Dijk knows he's pulling off, he's trying to pull off the shoulder, but he comes up to the ball, which is something he's not been doing. You've got to come up to the problem and snuff it out. And then it was a long distance shot in the end. And again, the four are in, in their shape. This is again, just drop off, sense where he wants it. He wants it in there. He makes it look so easy, but he's been punishing everyone with those runs. This one here, he has to thank his mate for, because Van Dijk doesn't switch off, and he does. He looks over his shoulder, he just gets that one there. But I have to say, Gomez uh, and his Southgate will be looking, to, you know, there's a problem for central mm. defenders. <clears throat> this young man's got everything he needs to play in a back three or a back four. He has to make it to the World Cup squad if he continues to play in that manner. So look at Manchester City's disallowed goal here, which, which VAR intervened on. Guardiola's point afterwards and, and was anti Taylor had allowed the game to flow. He let a lot of challenges go. In fact, he let the Salah one and Bernardo, Bernardo Silva on Salah a bit later go. If you're refereeing in that way, was he right to let this go originally? Yeah, I, I think the majority of people have been um, pleased with the improvement of letting, letting the game go. Particularly more. Taylor, actually. He's one, isn't he? He's, He's very high, good. Very high bar. I mean, Graham Sinest talked about it earlier in the season as well, and, and, and I agreed with him in the fact that it, you know, it, it, make, it makes the game better to watch. We all like a bit of passion. And I, I think they got... The, I would rather them get the odd one wrong and have to come back then keep blowing up and feel like you're never getting any rhythm to the game. So even though he'd refed it in a certain way, was he right to overrule himself when he went to the screen on yes, that one? Yes, because he and pulled his shirt, it was a foul. And that's the case where VAR is working excellently. And just because that's obviously an important goal into the game, so he has to then bring it back. So that's perfect. Well, VA, VAR gives the platform for the referees to be able to let it go and then pull back if there's a mistake rather than the other way around. Okay, and we were told uh, as well that um, if it hadn't have been disallowed for the shirt pull, it would have then been disallowed for Harland's challenge on Allison. 